asked me to bring the word this morning, and uh, he has been teaching on honor, and uh, he wanted to stay in that flow, which yeah, thrills me because that's one of my favorite subjects, is honor. And uh, so we're going to study a little bit on that this morning. Amen? Amen. Is that all right with y'all? Well, I looked up, I just want to start out right off the bat. It's, I always like to do this whenever I'm studying on a subject. I looked up the word honor in the, uh, I believe it was the Webster's 1828 Dictionary which leans a little more towards biblical things. So honor, uh, the first definition is the esteem due or paid to something of worth or high estimation. In other words, it's something of value. Uh, a testimony of esteem, any expression of respect or of high estimation by words or actions. Just notice actions there. Uh, number three, dignity, exalted rank or place, a place of distinction. Man, makes me think of so many things I could go out and do. Uh, number four, reverence, veneration, or any act by which reverence and submission are expressed as worship paid to the supreme being. You know, honor is a matter of the heart. We we'll keep going back to that, and maybe we get tired of hearing it, but it is. It is all about the heart. It is an internal issue. Uh, if we don't value something, if you have no value on it, you will not honor it. If, you, if it loses value to you, then you don't honor it. You won't. Naturally, you just won't. That's the only way honor is going to be placed on something is if, if it actually has inherent value to you. When we lose that, we lose the honor for it. No matter what it is. Your spouse, your children, yeah, I mean anything. If we lose value, lose the value of it, we lose our honor for it. What God has done for us is more valuable than anything we have on this planet. I don't care what amount of money or whatever you can possibly think of and imagine in your head, what God has done for us and what we still have coming to us as children of God is more valuable than anything that man could possibly come up with. Amen. And we will see that even more as time continues. Amen? So easily we forget about the blessings that we have. You know, honor, especially in our society, is something that has faded fast over time. I mean, not just lack of honor, but complete dishonor, disrespect. I see it at work. I see it out in public. I see it wherever, in restaurants. Just complete rudeness. Of course, the Bible talks about it, but it's, that's, it's, it's, it's biblical. It's unfortunate, but it's biblical. There are many ways that we show honor and live a life of honor, but one that I wanted to focus on today is, I think, one of the crucial ones, and that is faithfulness, being faithful. Amen? So, with that being said, like I said a minute ago, I like to look up the word because it gives you some different perspectives of, the, of what that word means. So faithful, what is faithful? To be firm in adherence to the truth and to the duties of religion. Firmly in adhering to duty. Thank the Lord that our soldiers are faithful whenever they go overseas to fight for this country. 
constant in the performance of duties or services. Wow. Constant. Sometimes our flesh wants to struggle with that. An observant of compact treaties, contracts, vows, or other engagements. You know, they talk about being faithful in our marriage. That's a contract. It is a covenant that we struck in our marriage, and it's important to be faithful in that. To be conformable to truth and to be constant, not fickle. Turn to 1 Samuel 2, please, this morning. Praise you, Father. You know, this was uh, an area where, let me turn over here so I don't lose track of what's going on. In verse 34, God was dealing with Eli, his sons. He were, they were, uh, you know, God had called them into the priesthood. And God was, uh, their, his sons had been, uh, well, being unfaithful. They, have, they had lost their honor for the positions that they held, and they had been doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing. And God was a little ill about it, especially since Eli wasn't really doing much about it. And he should have. It was his responsibility, and he should have shut it down quick. Because Eli knew about it. God knew that Eli knew about it, and Eli wasn't doing anything about it. We could apply that to our lives, couldn't we? <laughs> Because there's been some things God's dealt with me. You need to deal with that. And I went on for a long time. And I didn't want to deal with it because uh, my flesh didn't like it. Well, sometimes there's consequences. Yeah. So in verse 34, he come down. God finally just said, Now this bit shall be a sign to you that, that will come upon your two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, in one day. They shall die, both of them. You mean God just goes around killing everything? No. No. But God will remove his hand of protection if we are stiff-necked and stubborn and refuse to do what he asked us to do. Then he will remove his hand of protection. God doesn't go around just striking people with lightning bolts. But if you, ref if you are live a stubborn, stiff-necked life and refuse to listen to him, he will, he will allow it to be dealt with at some point. I mean, it's not that he's doing it. We did it to ourselves. And Hophni and Phinehas did this. It says, in one day they shall die. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and what is in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. Now, I went to that verse because I wanted you to see that latter part there. God, that, what is God after here? I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what? What is in my heart and what is in my mind. Someone who is faithful is concerned about what God is concerned about. They're not concerned about their position or how, 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 what kind of a position they can achieve in, in, in wherever they're going. A faithful person is, what's con is, is concerned about what God is concerned about. They're not concerned about anything of self. That's what appeals to God. Someone who has a heart that is in the right place. Amen. Amen. So that's why I wanted to go to there. That's what he's after. That's, to God, that's what... Is, that's what faithfulness means. 
in Proverbs 20 and verse 6, it says, uh, most men will proclaim each his own goodness. A lot of people are real good at that, talking about how good they are. <laughs> Makes me think of the other day, uh, this guy, he, uh, he, was, he was talking about how, how good of a welder he was. We needed to weld this piece on this rail car and and he was talking about how good he was, and he had done this and done that. And, oh, man, I, I used to do this, and we did it for hours, and I was a supervisor, and I'd got a yacht of him and, you know, beat my eye. I said, okay. I just handed him the, I said, here you go. Get after it. Oh, no, I'll let you handle it. No, 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 you're good. I mean, you the man. I mean, that's what you were just telling me. I mean, you, I mean, you was the welder's welder. I mean, I mean, you created welding, and... Yeah. I mean, your welder says Noah was here on the side of it. I mean, get after it. No, I'm, I'm good. Well, I thought you said, you know. So man is, I've seen it many times in different places. Man is real good about, you know, tooting his own horn. And that really bothers God. It bothers a lot of people too. If you're good, keep your mouth shut. It'll come out eventually. Somebody will see it. If God's given you a gift, just stay with it. Stay faithful to it, but keep that trap shut. This is what gets us in a lot of trouble right here. I know it does me, and I'm sure it does other people, especially at home. Man. Anyway, that's, that's a subject for another day anyway. <clears throat> Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? That's what God's after. A faithful man. Proverbs 28 and 20. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. So does that mean that God doesn't want us to be rich? Nope. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying if you don't want to be faithful to the right things and all you want to do is just chase after wealth and riches, then God, then God will have a problem. A faithful man will always do what's asked of him and always do what's right. Even if it costs him. Even if it makes him look bad. A faithful man will do what's right even when no one is looking. Of course, there never is a time, really, when no one is looking. I'm reminded of last night I was, uh, what was the name of the show? Undercover Bosses. And uh, they this one little snippet this boss had uh, had gone undercover and he looked ridiculous he had this wig on and a hat and all this and, and this lady it was some kind of a a home cleaning company I think that uh, where they went back whenever they had a fire or a flood or whatever and they cleaned the house up and and re did repairs and this boss was there and she wasn't making much money but he come in like he was a new employee and she was training him. And he asked her about, you know, why we did this and why we do that. And she said, we owe it to this customer that when we leave here, it's right. And she said, I'm going to make sure that it is right when I leave. And she went through other areas of, you know, um, she had talked to him about, you know, well, I'm not really making that much, but it doesn't matter because it is my responsibility to make sure this is right when I leave. That's my job. This man pays me X amount of dollars to do this job. I agreed to it, and that's what I'm going to do. And she's unknowingly telling this to her boss, the man that owns the company. Well, he's sitting there. Uh, relaying this information in a boardroom with these other bosses and he's talking to them and he broke down because that's so uncommon for someone to have that, art, that, that, that attitude. 
he ended up promoting her big time. I mean, big time, and she deserved it. She was faithful. She didn't even know who she was talking to. But she was faithful, and it paid off. And we should always be that way. How many people need to learn that lesson nowadays? Because they lose track of what's right. It's like they don't even care anymore. But a faithful man will do what's right even when no one, was, no one is looking. And like I said, there's never a time that no one is looking. A faithful man is willing and desires to show honor. Because their love for the master drives them to. He honors from the heart. Not just outwardly, but honor is in his heart because he is truly submitted in his heart. Is that not where honor starts, though? When you're capable of submitting to someone or something, when you're capable of submitting yourself, that's what a lot of us struggle with, pride but honor starts with that submission in there. He allows his heart to lead him down the path of honor and the mind and the body will follow suit. If he allows his heart to lead him down that path. A faithful man isn't faithful to get something. I believe the Holy Spirit gave me these. I, I was just sitting there and just started writing this stuff down. A faithful man isn't faithful to get something. He's just being faithful because, well, he just is. This is standing right in the middle of honor's ground when you are this way. A faithful man is a man of honor. He honors just because he's honorable. And in turn, he gets honored. Praise you, Father. Now, I do want to clarify something. I'm sure you know. When I say a faithful man, I mean human being. This is not about your gender. We not only honor God, he, of course, gets the highest honor, but we should also honor our man of God, shouldn't we? And guess what? One of the huge ways to honor our man of God is to be faithful to him and the church. That's That's where his heart is. That's what God has called him here to do. And when you're faithful to that, you're being faithful to him. Amen? So here is just a little small list of things that Dr. Cody has communicated in the past. That these are things that he considers to be part of faithfulness, especially to him. Number one, be reliable. Be reliable in your attendance in your tithing, in your offerings, in any task that he's assigned you to do. Be reliable. We can apply that to every area of our life. Be reliable. You know? If you say you're going to do something, do it. That's one thing that really, you know, I've uh, been dealing with this guy getting my barbecue sauce bottled, manufactured. And, uh, he would, uh, in, our, in our email, he only does email for some reason, which really bothers me. I'd rather talk to somebody because sometimes words written down can be misconstrued and misunderstood. So that's why I just don't like the whole email thing. But anyway, that's all he does is email. So, okay. Uh, and then he'll tell me, well, 
as soon as this is done, I'll email you and let you know. Well, day after day and after day after day goes by. Should have been done by now, and I finally email him. Uh, did we get this done? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was done the other day. But you said you were going to email me. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Well, I am too, but, you know, it's just little things like that that when you tell somebody you're going to do something, I could have had something else done if he would have just done what he said he would have done. I, I, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And it creates those problems. But that applies to every area of our life, with our, dealing with our work, with our family. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Be reliable. Number two, be excellent. A lot of us struggle with that. I could go in 50 different directions with that. But be excellent in the way you dress. I never even started the timer. I do the timer for you guys, not me. <laughs> but anyway, I forgot to set it, so hopefully I'll just, uh, whew, it's getting close. So we're going to try to finish up here. I'm sorry. Uh, to be excellent in representing the church and your man of God. Number three, be loyal to the church and to him and the mandates put on the church. Be loyal. Uh, be trustworthy. That goes back to being reliable, trustworthy. Do what you say you'll do. And be consistent. Do all of that all the time. Why is that so difficult? Because... Uh, we as a society have become so casual about things that we lose our, we lose what's valuable. We lose our honor a lot of times. If we claim to love our man of God and we want to honor him, then we must stay faithful to him. Amen? Matthew chapter 10 and verse 40. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. You know, that whole parable is talking about honor. It's talking about levels of honor. And a lot of people misconstrue that. They think that it's talking about a prophet, and, there's, and it's talking about a righteous man, and it's talking about a disciple. I personally believe, and have been taught, that that is talking about the same man looked at from three different perspectives. If you honor him as a prophet then your level of reward will be at that level. But if you only see him as, well, that's just the preacher, well, then your reward is based on that. We have lost honor for the office that he holds. Amen? It's not about hero worship. It's about honoring. Whether you like the man or not, you honor the office. You know, I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway, another area that real quickly, and we're, we're fixing to shut this down. I'm going to let you all go home. But another area that we can focus on is honor your gift. Everyone in here, whether you, whether you know it or not, has a call on your life. may not be full-time ministry. It may not be uh, being a, an evangelist or a missionary, but you have a call. You have a purpose. God's placed a purpose. He has a divine call on your life to do something for him. Honor that gift. If you don't know what it is, find out. Get before the Lord and find out. And then, But we are responsible for taking care of that gift. You are responsible for getting in there and stirring that up. And as you utilize that gift, whether it be from children's ministry to preaching the word to teaching to 
whatever it may be. You stir that gift up. Keep it stirred up. Keep it before the Lord. Talk to him. Let him lead you down that road. But you are responsible to do that. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4 and 1 through 8. I'll read that quickly. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing to, with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen? He's, talk, he's saying, walk worthy of the call that I've placed on your life. We can't all be perfect. But we can at least strive to be better. Amen. Amen. We should all be striving and contending to live a life of honor. Not just to bestow honor on God or someone else, but just to be honorable. To be a person of honor. Like Elisha was with Elijah. He refused to leave his side. Served him with honor and stayed faithful to him, and he was blessed for it. Faithfulness and honor will also spill over into other areas of your life if we will allow it to. It can, it can and will benefit us greatly if we learn to walk in it on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. That is all I have this morning. So if you want to stand to your feet, that's what God put on my heart. I know it's pretty much cut and dried, but I believe it is something that God is very, very concerned about because he seems to be staying in this flow of honor.